Sherry, back to you. Does this, does hearing this change anything for you in your mind? Um, I, I don't think I can make a change like that. Um, I think it would be something that I need to speak with my physicians about who are specifically familiar with my condition and my issues with bleeding and clotting and my, you know, the, the antiphospholipid antibodies that I uh, deal with on a daily basis and the medication that they do or don't give me and how that affects me. It's a very risky decision. I'm surviving on dialysis at this point very healthily. I'm ex an extremely healthy dialysis patient. Uh, which is a wonderful thing. And I'm enjoying my family now, uh, doing very well. Uh, if I end up getting the vaccine and it makes me very sick, uh, then I, I don't know if I'm in a better circumstance or worse. At this point, I'm scared, uh, nervous. I need recommendations from the physicians who are most familiar with my condition. And um, I think, you know, well, I'm not ruling it out, but at this time, I'm, fear is still huge all for right. me. And we, that anxiety. And you know, you're such a great ad advocate and quarterback for your health. You are on top of it, and I'm sure you will have a very thorough and uh, healthy discussion with both transplant team and your other treating doctors for your other issues. You know, back to you, Brad, Dr. Spellberg, what's your advice to people who, in general, who wanna have non-judgmental conversations with their doctor about vaccine concerns? You ask questions and we do our best to provide information. In fact, there have been studies of patients with autoimmune disease, including lupus, and those patients get antiphospholipid syndrome, and those patients did not have an increased risk of adverse events from the vaccine. So there are data to answer these questions. The data is out there. And you know, it's vaccine hesitancy that's very difficult to overcome. We just have to keep providing the information. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Sherry's got another problem that we haven't talked about yet, because let's say she gets vaccinated, she gets the transplant, she's going to have three other people in her house who aren't vaccinated. And so that is also going to increase her risk and increase her exposure. And so I think it's going to need to be a family discussion. You've got two teenage sons and a husband who also I'm sure have some questions. So this all has to take place. Is that, is that right, Dr. Spellberg? Everybody in the house has got to be careful. And I don't think it's realistic to think that for the next six months post-transplant, everybody in that house is going to quarantine. Yeah, Dr. Ish, you're 100% correct. I, will, I cannot tell you how many patients we've seen who have acquired COVID from their family members. Yeah. That is the biggest, you know, Local contacts that you live with are the people you get it from and they're healthy and they did fine and you're not healthy and you crash and burn. And, you know, it's really painful to watch those family members deal with the death of that loved one. Well, Sherry, a uh, lot of information we shared with you and our, and our viewers in general. We wish you all the best. We know that you are smart and a great advocate for yourself. You're going to do your homework and you will make the right decision. Thanks Thank for coming. You. And, and you. Brad, Dr. Spellberg, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for your insight. Good to see you, Dr. Orton.